Welcome back to Bradley's Garage. We got a cool video today. Uh, Dino here reached out to us over on Instagram and sent us a message that he needs some help with his 1991 Ford Bronco. He's having an issue with the steering column. The ignition is all jacked up, so we're gonna help him out, get him back on the road, and let's jump on it. All right, so first step, unhook the battery. We're gonna be working with the headlights and stuff. So get your half inch socket and remove your negative battery cable. So after you get the battery hooked up uh, while you're underneath the hood, it's a good idea, sometimes you got some corrosion, so it's a good idea to just go ahead and get some penetrating spray and spray this knuckle because that's where we're gonna uh, be taking this apart a little bit later. All right, so come inside. You're gonna go ahead and uh, pull the light switch out. You see a little groove. If it's not at the top right now, you know, you can just spin it around, move it depending on where your little dimmer switch is. Get it on top there, and then you just need a little, uh, this is just a little cotter pin puller, but there's a, a little metal uh, tab, and all you have to do is just push back on it, and it slides right off. So if you look here, there's a metal tab right there. We're just basically, I'll show you, we're just pushing back on this and it releases it off of the shaft. And the same thing with uh, the wiper switch here. Um, this one, for some reason, it's not lined up with the, with the groove. It's, I feel it on the bottom. So I'm just gonna put a little pressure on the tab on the bottom here. and it comes off. You see here, this one's a little bit different. I'm not really sure why that's not lined up at the top, but uh, just take a look at where what the angle of yours is, and your same thing, you're just pushing back on that uh, bottom tab right there to have it slide off the shaft. Next up, we're just gonna go ahead and pop this trim cover off. It's just held on by a couple of clips, so it's pretty straightforward. Shouldn't be too difficult. Pull straight out. These clips, uh, I don't want to break anything, so I kind of get a plain tip screwdriver in the bottom to pry those out. And then I got my pry tool here on the top. You know, we don't want to mess up our, our bezel, our trim. And it, you know, of course it's it doesn't just, you know, fall out. Like we'd want it to you know, come out easy, but it's kind of just want to work it out a little bit. And then once you get it kind of primed, then you can get it out. Do the same thing on the next one. I just slide my plain tip in the bottom there. Mm, okay, otherwise you start pulling on this, then you end up breaking this, cracking the trim, and then you'll have another item that's uh, very difficult to find. So, moving on. All right, to move the right side trim, you need to take off this uh, Phillips screw right here. All right, so same thing on this side, little clip that holds it. All right, and of course, uh, we got uh, actually this side's a little bit better we have a, a normal plug where you know you push in with your your thumb and it pulls out so that's good um, this side another one of those dumb double clips those are fun like I said you need uh, Another, another set of hands. Okay, got it. Next, after you get the trim off, uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove this little bezel, just a little cover that hides the uh, access to the shift selector cable. So there's two Phillips screws, one on each side. And it's just threaded into plastic, so they're kind of a long screws, but they just thread into plastic. As you can see, quite long. So the other one's right here. Okay, and then the bottom piece will come off, and then the top one. You can just kind of, it rotates 
around. Uh, you can either go left or right, and then that's off. So basically you got two pieces that just go uh, together like so. Okay, so next up we have our uh, get a quarter drive socket, uh, quarter inch. And we're gonna remove this little keeper. It's a very short little stubby screw. Remove that out. And then this is the gear selector. This is what the cable that moves the, you know, the PRNDL moves your little icon over there. So you're just gonna lift up on it and unhook it off of that little, it's just got a little eyelet on the end of it. So we're just going to use a screwdriver here and we're gonna unhook it off of there. And then that, the clip, you have to just push it all the way towards the top and take it out of the groove. And now this is free and we can work on underneath now. Okay, so now we're gonna remove this trim on the below the steering column. So it's just a, a quarter twist on all four of those. And then this will just pop right out. Okay, so we're down on the floor here. We're just gonna go ahead and uh, pull the carpet back. Sometimes it has some adhesive. I think this one's been um, played with before. So we're gonna just pull that carpet back and then um, you wanna just reach on the passenger side on the column here and then pull that circle off and then you're gonna pull that down as well. We're trying to access these bolts here. You're gonna need your 3 8 drive socket and we're gonna go ahead and take those out. Okay, and then you got one that's up here at the top. I know it's kind of tough to see. I'll get up there just with a long extension. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and grab all those out. There's a little rubber gasket on the between the firewall and the steering column so they kind of get held in place. And then next up, we're gonna loosen this, uh, this collar here. And that's gonna be, you have the switch sockets, that's gonna be a uh, half inch. So you don't, you don't have to take it all the way out, you just wanna loosen it, that way it's free. As you can tell, <laughs> He, he, had, he had this off. Normally this is up on top of the steering column. He had this off because, you know, you have to slide it over to sort of hotwire your own car if the rod is broken. So normally that'll be on there. We'll show you guys what it looks like, but uh, uh, we're ready to go underneath the hood. All right, so just get your uh, half inch socket on there. And, uh, you know, so like I said, sometimes this thing gets corroded and it's tight. So that's why I always spray it before we get started on the project. So that way you come back uh, you know 20 minutes later after you get done with the inside and then it's free and I turned the wheel a little bit so we're so the bolt is pointing straight up that just makes it a little bit easier for you to access it okay all right look at that thing yeah the thread lock on there Okay, so this is a little tough. Uh, we have uh, Dino's down on the ground there with uh, a big Bertha screwdriver. I'm up on top. This is the gear selector. This is what is on the column, the column shift. So it has a little plastic grommet. Sometimes they get hard and brittle. So he's gonna pry on the bottom while I twist on the top. Okay, go ahead, Dino. And it pops out, so. Like I said, <laughs> it's uh, it's really a two-man operation because that thing, we try to pry it from the top, but it's it just doesn't budge. We got that out. Now we can go ahead and uh, go back inside and uh, remove the steering wheel. All right, so next up, we're on the back of the steering wheel. We're gonna take our Phillips. We need to remove the uh, horn and uh, cruise control buttons. So it's very simple. It's just two Phillips here to remove that cover and that will access the steering wheel nut. All right, so after you get those two screws out, then it's just a uh, pull. It has a couple little uh, clips that, you know, for the horn to function. And then just go slow because you're gonna need to 
unplug these wires. Okay, and it's just a, a single connector, a single connector, blue and yellow. So the negative here, you just get a little plain tip and put some pressure here to close that gap. And it just kind of gets stuck on the threads, uh, but then it comes out. So as you can see, there's a little, a couple little teeth on there. So but before we put it back in, we'll make sure and stretch it back out. So those two little prongs will make contact with the threads and give a good ground. So just spread it out before you stick it back in. Okay, so next up is we're gonna take our nut off of the steering wheel that holds it. This is a 15 16 So you'll get your buddy to hold the wheel so it doesn't move on you. Or you can use an impact as well. That'll work. And then you can probably do it one man operation. Okay, so after we get that off, then typically, if you've never had this off before, most likely you'll need the steering, uh, steering wheel removal tool, which um, here's a picture of what that looks like. You can rent that from AutoZone O'Reilly's, your local auto parts store, just uh, borrow that. All right, so Dino said he's had it off before. He was gonna give it a little wiggle and it'll come off, right? Okay, all right, that's good. So like I said, if, you don't, if you've never had it off before, just get this, the steering wheel removal tool. It'll make it easier and you're not gonna bust your, uh, your tooth. Next up, you'll need a little, I'm just using a little scratch all here. And of course you need the uh, ignition key. So we're gonna insert the ignition key. We're going to turn it all the way to about right before it starts, okay? I pulled out the hazard switch here just to make a, a nice straight shot. And there's a little hole there. You're just gonna apply a little bit of pressure, okay? And then I just wiggle this right at that point. Right at that point and then your ignition comes out. So really what we're touching is that little pin. So it, the pin sinks in right when you have the key in the exact position. So just play around with it a little bit, wiggle it back and forth as you're applying pressure and you should be able to pop that ignition out and we can transfer it to the new one. So next up is uh, we're gonna remove the two bolts that hold the steering column to the chassis. You're gonna get your 9 16 and you're gonna remove these. It's a good idea to have uh, your buddy help hold the steering column up while you're doing this. So we got Dino holding that. Otherwise, it'll try to fall on your head. Okay, all right. So now, as you can see, our steering column is completely free and it's falling down here, so we can go ahead and pull it back towards us. And I think we have our firewall plate, you know, from the adhesive to make a good seal. It's a little stuck. Oh, shit guys, we forgot one bolt. One bolt, forgot. One more right up here. It was hidden behind the rubber. Yeah, I was like, why is it stuck? Okay, makes sense now. So, we detach. And we're free. Sorry, so we got it unhooked there. As you come in, you're just gonna rotate it to the left because of the gear selector that's out there. All right, so, and then you just strategically get it to squeeze by the brake pedal. Okay, it's just stuck, uh, yeah. Okay. And remember, on um, I know we didn't show you guys because we have this off, but normally this is bolted, you know, right there. So you're just going to go ahead and unplug the the two connectors for the steering column, and they just unplug. But of course, like all Ford connectors, mm, they're difficult.
okay. And like I said, normally this is mounted right here, so you have two nuts, but you wouldn't have to take it off. You're just gonna unplug it. And that side, the clip is already broken, so makes it easy for us to just unplug it. So now you got those unplugged, and we can remove the steering column out of the vehicle. Okay, so this is the original one, and as you can see is we have uh, something. I'm not really sure exactly how it all works, but uh, something inside here is, is broken or not connected because we switched this part and that didn't solve anything because the key is still not engaging this rod. So um, rather than disassembling all this and doing a full rebuild, it's easy. Go to the junkyard, any F-150, Bronco, F-250, F-350, anywhere from 87 to 91, they all use the exact same steering column. So it's easier just to take it out, put a new one in, and then you can just keep this one if you want to repair it or do whatever work. You can rebuild this one, put it on the shelf, but for 50 bucks, it's not even worth it to start messing around and taking this one apart. Okay, so when you go to the junkyard, uh, sometimes you get lucky and the key, you know, if you get there on the first day or so, they put out a truck or a Bronco, then the key may be in the ignition. In our case, you know, we didn't get lucky, so um, we're going to have to drill out the tumbler in order to, you know, get the ignition out of the junkyard one. So we know that we got about... Uh, about 12, let's say roughly 12 millimeters. Uh, so we're gonna find a drill bit so we can just go down the center here and just try to drill out uh, the tumbler so that way we can uh, push, be able to push this pin up and slide it out. All right, guys, let's uh, try. I'm gonna do this 3 8 bit, which is a little under 10. Let's see if we can get it to go down the middle here. Okay, let's see where we are. Pretty much there. Yeah, we're pretty much there. Okay. Okay, so we got 90% uh, of the guts drilled out. So I'm just gonna put on. It looks like we're able to move it. So, eh, actually, it, yeah, it's almost falling apart. So let's see. Let's see if we can just get it pop out and we did good guys. Fuck yeah, look at that. So we drilled it out and we were able to get the pin and we just have to push. To so we'll just get the air compressor, blast it out and there we go. Okay, so we drilled down the center and the only thing that's left is the engagement for the ignition switch. So we're gonna go ahead and just reach in there and grab that out. And this should just pull straight out for you. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and put a little uh, lithium grease on that because this is the part that slides in. And that's the part that, you know, engages and turns, so. All right, so we left this loose, okay? This is our little controller. We loosened it up. We want to make sure this rod is all the way down, okay? Because we're basically almost at the crank position. So you want to make sure it's all the way down Get your uh, grooves lined up here. Remember the pin is gonna be facing towards the hazard switch, so down this way, the way we have the column. And then you're gonna insert it in, right? And then just make sure you get your hand, your left hand on there, give it a little wiggle. And then once it's in, then you can back it up and you're set. So now you can just test it. You watch the, the lever here. Yep, we're engaging, so it's working great. Okay, pull the key out. And then we can go ahead and uh, get this tightened up. We don't have to cinch it now. We want to double check. It is grooved, so it, it will be able to be adjusted. So we'll make sure that the ignition is perfectly lined up and we're cranking and releasing the starter and the engagement is good. So we can slide this and tighten that up after it's already you know, 
in the car, okay, before we fully tighten these. Okay, so last step before we uh, reinsert the steering column is we're gonna go ahead and put our little bushing in for the shift rod selector. Uh, on the Bronco 87 and 91, it's uh, 74040, uh, the Dorman brand. You can get that online. We'll put the link in the description below for you guys. So let's throw it in. So as you can tell, the new one, brand new, it's actually pliable. If you look at our old one here, this thing is literally dry rotted, hard as a rock. That's why it's very difficult to get out. It wouldn't be difficult to get out if you had a brand new bushing. So putting it in, now that it's, uh, it's soft, is a piece of cake. So we'll go ahead and um, just put a little, a little dab there for the next guy, right? Maybe that little bit of lube will help slide that bad boy out next time. All right, so insulation, very similar to the removal. Just remember, as you go down, you're going to rotate the whole assembly uh, slightly up so your gear selector part is facing up, but then after you get it past, a little cable here, after you get it in, then you can uh, rotate it a little bit. That way you want this to be uh, horizontal. So you know you got it right when you got this part horizontal. We got Dino inside uh, holding the steering up so it's not sloppy. And go ahead and uh, push it forward. Okay. Wiggle it a little bit. Okay. All right. And then we just, this, uh, the rest of the steering column can, you can move a little bit. Uh, so you just want to get it lined up. We see our holes there, so we're gonna have to rotate that and then slide it on. Okay, and we get our bolt. All right, so I just uh, put a little uh, fresh Loctite on there. And then the wires are kind of in your way. We can't turn the wheel this time because we don't have the wheel on yet. So um, just want to wiggle this around until you get it into the groove and get it started. You can start threading it. Okay, we got it in. All right, we'll leave that there for now. We'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, so we just get our bolts and then I just started a couple here. You just use your extension and get it by hand, get it started. That's the best part, easy. That was that hidden one. I didn't see it last time. So that's why you just, everything is still loose. That way you can wiggle it around, get it to be set in the firewall like you want it. And then we got this top one up here. Okay, once you get them all started, then you grab your Milwaukee. All right, go ahead and get your half inch. Tighten up your collar. And then you can go ahead and just get your little padding. Get that all back against the firewall. Sound deadener. And then you can put the carpet back underneath the gas pedal. Okay, tuck it under here. Okay, all right. Okay, so I'm gonna remove these bolts again. We just had hand tight. We just started a couple threads. Remove those out on both sides and then have your buddy, we got Dino here. He's gonna lower it down for us, okay? Lower it down. And then basically I'm just gonna reach up there and I'm going to plug in that connector. And then down below here, 
we can get this other connector and plug it in as well. Uh, with the steering column lowered a little bit, you just want to hook the end back inside the wheel there, the column I should say, and then get your little piece shift selector cable there, and then we're just going to put our bolt back in. Okay, so we have our little stubby uh, quarter drive, quarter socket, quarter drive set, and then we're going to go ahead and just put that back. It's usually like a little indent of where it was before, so we're just going to copy that. You can always adjust it down the road if for some reason the gear selector doesn't line up. Okay. Right, and then now we're gonna go ahead and get our trim pieces on. This is a lot easier to do when it's held down a little bit. Just remember, don't go too low because you'll run the risk of breaking the um, selector cable. A little tricky, you got to, I was just gonna test fit it, so. All right, there you go. So you have the notches there, notches there, a little indentation, so now we're gonna go ahead and slide this in, slide okay, this underneath. Yeah, upside down. I go switch the bottom. Oh, that's right. I threaded it from the bottom. You're right. See, it's a good thing we got Dino here. Tell us how to do our job. I love it. <laughs> um, okay, so, all right. There we go. So we get it held up. And then you got your two screws, remember? Uh, they look like this, just Phillips. Get those in. Just get one started. And the bad thing is it's plastic, so it's like in the side of that plastic tube, so the whole entire thing feels like it has tension. So you gotta thread a little bit. Okay, just remember don't over tighten it because it is plastic and you will just crack it. All these parts are old, remember that, and difficult to find good donor parts. Okay, now that that's on, now we can lift up the column and put our bolts back in that hold the column in place. So sometimes you gotta wiggle them around a little bit to get them started. And then you're gonna get your 9 sixteenths. Tighten them up. So, got my little ratcheting wrench on there. Since we don't have the wheel, I mean, we could do this. You get to put the wheel on and then turn it straight up like we did when we took it apart, but I just got my wrench in there. And that's good. Got our thread lock on there. Okay. Okay, so I got my hand on the gear selector. We put a little grease in there, and now we're just gonna push it right in. A lot easier to push it in on a new one that's pliable, so very good. Okay, we're ready to put the wheel on. So we left it pretty much straight when we took it apart, so we'll just put it back on the same way. We're pretty much in the middle there. Where's our key? The lock works, that's good. All right, yeah, I think we're, we're right where we need to be. And get our, our nut here. Thread that back on. And our, our steering wheel is locked, so that'll help us. Okay, that's not going anywhere. And then remember uh, that we did the ground first. So like I said before, just stretch it out so it's fat. And then you can take that same screwdriver that you used before and just push straight down the center. Okay, now it locks into place. And then the connector here, you can't really mess up. It's round, uh, it's kind of one piece. So, you know, the blue one is in the top middle. 
Okay, so you got your blue and your yellow. And we lay this back into place. And you just give it a little push like we're going to honk the horn. And then we can grab our, our two screws uh, for the back side. Uh, all right, so we just snug these up. This is our little cover. All right, so we have our right side cover. That's a simple plug and play. Snaps on. This one, you just need to make sure it's lined up so it goes towards the steering wheel. Okay. And then there's just clips here. Clip here, clip here, clip here. So three little push-in clips. They're very, very gentle, nothing crazy. Okay, and then we have our screw on this side. Just your Phillips here. All right, so now we can work on our left side. These, uh, they don't give you much, much cable here, so you have to get pretty close to get it plugged in. Um, well, that one's gray, so maybe the gray should go with gray. Come on, this guy. Um, black on black here. Okay, push it in. They're even hard to snap in. All right, so then this one's a little tricky. You just need to make sure you eyeball the holes for the lights and the wipers. Um, don't want to start pushing it back until you have those in. And just a little snap, just like the other side. A couple little clips. And they snaps into place, all good. And then we have our wiper, which is the... Um, uh, what is that? Little pentagon? Five-sided, right? Um, and it has a flat, you know, like a half moon. So just make sure you're putting it back on in the same place. You just push it down and it's going to slide right on. The headlight is a triangle, so that's why you can't get them confused. And then you want to just line up that triangle. Same thing, push it on. Now they're both on, locked into place. Wipers are working. All right, so last up is our cover for the bottom here. So just get that in and then it's just a quarter turn. Push, push and turn. All right, so let's go ahead and hook up that negative cable. Get that tightened down. All right, here we go. Here's the test. We got the battery hooked up, put the key in and Oh, we got lights, so that's good. And we got ignition! Nice. Okay, so we're just gonna turn the wheel a little bit. And, until we get the bolt um, straight up. So we can go ahead and just uh, cinch that down, that, uh, you know, the steering shaft bolt. Okay, so we just go ahead and get our uh, half inch and we just want to go ahead and just make sure this is tight. Cinch that down. Okay, and beautiful. I have to say thank you. Thank you for uh, fixing my truck. It actually uh, helps my back because uh, I was hot wiring the damn thing. I had to bend over. I'm not a small guy, so for me to bend over and actually start it. It's uh, pretty incredible now that, uh, that you guys did it with the key. Once again, I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for the time. Thanks for reaching and out. Th thank you for the education there. I learned quite a bit. Cool. Thank you so much. Well, hopefully, guys, uh, this helps you out with your 87 and 91 Ford Bronco, F-150, F-250, F-350. All of them use the same exact steering column. So it's a quick little in and out. Do it yourself. Save your money. Go to the junkyard. Grab it for 50 bucks. Don't spend a thousand dollars online. This guy was almost ready to spend a thousand. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, so. Save li lifesaver. So hopefully that helps you out with your quick little repair here on your Bronco. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks again to Dino. Once again, thank you Bradley Garage.